Have you ever driven a robot around? If you're a regular viewer, the answer is probably yes, in which case you're going to want to watch this video. But if not, then stick around anyway, because I think you'll find it interesting. As you've probably seen from the title, I've developed what I think is the best freely available tool for controlling robots, and I want to show you how I did it. You see, figuring out how to control your robot isn't always such a simple problem. If it's your first time and your robot uses ROS, you'll probably find a tool like Teleop Twist Keyboard, and you'll quickly learn to hate it. You're fumbling a laptop in one hand, you need to keep the terminal window active so you can't open anything else, and if you need to trigger any other functions that your robot has that aren't in that program, you're going to need a separate program to handle that. At some point you level up to a gamepad or RC transmitter. You can hold it wirelessly while you monitor something on the screen, and you have all the buttons you need to trigger the functions of your robot. But this still has some limitations. The gamepad needs a way to talk to the robot, which usually means it's paired directly to it and is fiddly to change. You've still got to carry another device around to monitor things, and it's not always practical to use for testing while you're writing code, in simulation for example. There is hardware and software out there that does a great job of this, but they tend to be expensive, proprietary, and inflexible. In a world with Steam Decks and tablets and Bluetooth gamepads, surely we can do better. That's the problem I set out to solve, and in the process I ended up solving a few others, to the point where, as I said, I think this is the best tool for controlling robots, whether in development or production. I'll show you what it does, how I made it, and how you can go and download the code to try it out for yourself. If this sounds familiar to some of you, it's because I actually started on this project almost exactly three years ago, and although I worked on it in dribs and drabs and even made a video on the topic, it was never a complete solution, more a proof of concept. But now I can throw all that out and start fresh, because someone else has done most of the hard work for me. If you're not familiar, Foxglove Studio is a platform for remote monitoring and operation of robots. It can run as a desktop or a mobile app, or even in a web browser and it has its own method for receiving data from a robot, visualize it, and occasionally sending things back. This is going to be things like camera feeds, a 3D view with detected objects, battery levels, whatever. The device running Foxglove doesn't need to have ROS installed, and technically the robot doesn't need to run ROS either, but everything works best if it does. What's important for this video though, is that you can add your own functionality to it by writing extensions in JavaScript, in this case to handle gamepads. Also, this video isn't sponsored by Foxglove or anything, but uh, if you're listening, I wouldn't say no. So here I have a simulated robot set up. Later in the video we'll be using a real one, but this is easier for testing. And I'm running the classic setup. The gamepad is talking to Ross, sending the joystick commands. Ross then simulates the robot in Gazebo, and sends the results to Foxglove for display. Our goal here is to reverse this, so instead we want the gamepad talking to Foxglove, and that then sends it on to Ross. That way we can be using this on mobile devices, or anything else that can run Foxglove. As a start though, I just want to be able to see what's going on already. I used the Create Foxglove Extension tool to create an empty extension, added a subscription to the existing messages that Ross has on the Joy topic, and put in a very simple display of what it's doing. So you can see as we move the axes and press buttons, we can see what the gamepad is sending. This is a promising start, but it's not too hard to clean it up a bit. With a bit of tweaking, we can make it display a bit more like a controller, and add a setting to select which topic we want to display. And the layout and style of these buttons can be configured to suit whatever controller that you're using. We've barely started, and this is already quite a useful tool. As well as monitoring live, Foxglove can play back previously logged data. So if you had recorded someone operating the robot, suddenly you can now see exactly what they pressed when, which can help you understand when things went wrong. In my day job, I work on safety systems for heavy machinery, and monitoring operator controls is a big part of our design process. But we want to add a second mode, and that's our locally connected gamepad. Now, I'm not very experienced with React and TypeScript, but thankfully this wasn't too hard because I was able to use some previous work from another developer, Ryan Gavostes, that hooks into the browser gamepad API. With this API, you can get all the gamepads that are currently connected, figure out which axes and button are pressed, and even trigger the rumble functionality inside the controller. So now if we go back and kill the ROS joystick driver, we should see that this isn't working anymore, but I can now swap to gamepad, and hopefully when I move the sticks, we see it's showing up here, but our robot's not moving. 
That's because although Foxglove is receiving our gamepad input, it now needs to publish that information back to ROS to control the robot. This is pretty easy. We just need to add a publisher and then now it should work. So you see this is now receiving gamepad input into Foxglove, sending it to ROS. And if you wanna just turn off publishing to check the gamepad is working all right, you can do that. If you're a fool like me, you might think this is done and ready to be released, but you'll soon find out that it doesn't always work right on every platform in every condition. We're gonna come back to this later when we get it running on a Steam Deck and then on an Android tablet with a Bluetooth gamepad. In the meantime, I actually wanna add two other input modes. And first up is the keyboard. Now I know what you're thinking, didn't you start by saying how bad the keyboard is for controlling robots? Well, we can actually get around that and turn it into a useful tool. Sometimes when you're in the middle of development and you're at a desk, you don't actually want to have a gamepad in one hand and a keyboard in the other. But you also don't want to have to be using a terminal window that disappears on you and be limited in which buttons you can press. I've set it up so that you can map certain keys to the various buttons and axes, and then whenever the keyboard mode is set as the data source, it'll be listening for those keys. One kind of messy thing is that includes when you're typing things into a text field elsewhere. But you also don't want to restrict it to only being when this panel's active because you might want to be clicking around on other things and still driving your robot. There's a few different ways you could solve this, for example with a modifier key, but I found that it was enough to add this little checkbox. So with publish mode on, I can be driving our robot around and then if I need to say call a service, I can stop this. So now I can swap to the call service. You know, I can type things without affecting it. And then when I click enable keyboard, I can start driving around again. The fourth input mode is gonna be direct interaction with the display. On a PC, this isn't all that useful, but where I imagine this being handy is on mobile devices. The same interface that works with one person for their laptop and gamepad will work for someone else just on their phone. For that, we need to add some event callbacks to the displayed elements registering when they've been touched, and in the case of the sticks, what their position is. We can quickly check to see that that works. So you can see, sure enough, we can drive it around, but obviously that's gonna be a lot better on a mobile device. So now we've got all four input modes working. The next thing I wanna show you is how you can get this to run it for yourself. And in the process, we'll see some of the complications. Option one, the Foxglove Extension Marketplace. If you're on your computer and you just want to try this out, it's super easy. From within Foxglove, click the profile icon in the top right corner, go to extensions, you see no installed extensions, scroll down to joystick, click install, and then it should now show up in your list. If you want to use this in the web version of Foxglove though, you're out of luck. You can see in that same menu, when we go to install it, it says, download the desktop app to use marketplace extensions. In this case, you're gonna want option number two. You can download the .foxy extension from GitHub. So I'll include a link to this in the description, but just go find the latest release, download the .foxy file, and then all you need to do is drag and drop that onto Foxglove. And you can see it says installed extension, Josh Newen's Joy panel, and sure enough, there it is in our list. But what if you want to modify the code, which is currently the only way to add custom configurations? Then you want option three, clone the source code from GitHub and use Node and NPM to build it. You'll find the instructions in the readme. You can have it automatically installed to a local copy of Foxglove or generate your own .foxy file, which you can give to other people, other devices, drag and drop, same as before. But what if your browser doesn't support drag and drop, like some mobile browsers, or you're in a production environment and you just want it to be available on every device without having to go through all this? Then you need option four. I won't go through all the steps, but because Foxglove is open source, you can actually make your own copy of it, paste in the code from the extension, tweak a few other lines, and you'll have your own self-hosted version of Foxglove with the joystick panel available like all the others. At the moment, I'm finding that this is the best way to use it on mobile devices and the Steam Deck. So those are the four options. You can choose whatever works for you, and you should now be able to have a complete workflow from developing your robot with a keyboard-controlled simulation, piloting it from a standard mobile device, either Bluetooth controller or touchscreen, 
operating in production with a fully integrated device. Here, I'm just using a stock Steam Deck and then reviewing operator actions after a run. So what next? There's a few improvements I wanna make, particularly around customizability. If you're a pro at React and TypeScript, I'd welcome pull requests to clean up my dodgy copy pasted mess of code. But the dream would be you use this, you think it's great, you leave comments about how good it is, Foxglove takes over the project and integrates it either as a built-in or a first party marketplace panel, and then I get to use it without having to maintain it. Until then though, the best thing you can be doing if you find this software helpful or the video interesting is to support me on Patreon. There's a link down in the description and there's also options to make a one-off donation to support this work that I do in my spare time. Thanks especially to Anonymous, Weekly Robotics, Joshua Krafchin, Onkrashan, Sakthakumar, Kumar and Matt Williamson for their support of my channel. All right, I'll see you next time.